Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Hotline League. It is a banger here because we've got so much news to talk about, and we've got an amazing guest on. Uh, but first, before we get to any of that, let me introduce my constant co-host, Mark Zimmerman. How's it going? It's going great. I flew in yesterday. I'm excited. Um, no, I, I flew in two days ago. What day is it? No, no I flew in yesterday. Well, you flew in yesterday. Yeah, I would hope. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we were all in the same flight. Mark, you know, Mark guys. started to see that see that it was going to win, and he just headed to the airport. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I left early. Uh, no, I, Mark was too busy I, trying uh, to convince me. Sorry, I have to cut over you. Mark was trying to convince me to ride the mechanical bull at the after party the entire night, the entire night. And he I got Sven accept, on there. He did not accept my reasoning of what if I, you know, I'm a pretty big guy. If I fall on the mechanical bull and break my hands, I lose my entire career. And this guy was like, "Oh, you're so scared. Oh, you're too scared." Blah blah blah. blah. I think this guy is dumb, man. And Nero well, tried really Berserker, hard to get me to ride that mechanical bull, and I was not interested in that. Berserker and Sven wrote it, and they did just fine. I, I had more faith in you, I guess, than you did. I'm just a big fudge believer. I felt like such an old man. Everybody was doing that stuff, and then I was just sitting there talking esports business with esports business people. Um, that was that was that was my adventure. Uh, all right, our guest for the night is none other than Fudge. Shout out to Fudge. How's it going, Fudge? going pretty good uh i do have to uh warn you that my internet seems to be cutting out for like two seconds sometimes but it, it will overall be fine okay uh, it's just what happens at you know c9 internet you know we have happens. not no no your internet is oh wait yeah never mind we're good for a second i was worried about the sponsor thing but i think you're well, i don't know either way uh so good to have you on the show i think it's really cool because we haven't had we haven't had as many pro players on because you guys are all like busy now on mondays when we do the show so this is really fun. And shout out to, uh, I think, both Jack and Croissant. Because whenever we did Live Hotline League last Friday, um, Jack had mentioned that maybe you or Sven would be down. But then you guys had scrims. And then uh, when I was hanging out with Croissant this weekend, uh, C well, NRG coach, I guess I should say, um, he was like, you should really get a C9 player on if you can. So I, I pushed to see if I could make it, even though I think normally players are not down after a big match because they're just like just want to chill so i thought it was really cool that you said you were down so thank you oh did we lose him his internet dropped I, he looks very disinterested in what you're saying or he froze and i'm gonna guess with uh, the, welcome the back fudge the and my my internet is really good guys uh how, how often does it is that gonna happen so, i really hope it stops happening okay i i feel like this is Giga brain. I, oh no, my internet. I really once okay, or twice, I, and then I he's really gone off the wanted show. to do the show. And you know, if this just happens to keep happening, then I'm gonna blame the managers because I complain about the internet cutting out on this PC and in this house, and uh, not fixed. So well, this is the last time trans ever gonna I agree. I really want to do the show, guys, but my internet is unfortunately too bad. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> Thanks for having <laughs> not, me on. Not in my control. Not in my control. Anyway. All right. Anyway, anyway, shout out to Alienware for sponsoring the show. We'll talk more about them uh, later. But uh, I guess Mark, we'll do a quick, quick little blurb with you before we go. We we switch over to Fudge because we don't know how long he's gonna have. We're gonna have him. But what did you watch on the plane? I didn't watch anything on the plane. Uh, I got Vampire Survivors on my Steam Deck, and it was perfect for flights. It just made them melt by. Uh, Steam Deck is OP. Switches are OP. If you can afford it, I highly recommend getting some mobile gaming station. Okay. Did you watch? Have you watched anything good lately? Yes, I'm watching Beef. As some people in chat are saying, I watch episode one of Beef. It's so fucking good. Um, someone else mentioned Swarm. I watched uh, some of Swarm. Swarm was also really good. Um, uh, Survivor new seasons on. Love is Blind. A bunch of anime. It's a good new season of anime. I don't know. Lots of stuff. Well, Weeb. there you go. What are you watching lately, Fudge? I don't watch TV shows. I only watch VODs. What, do you, what did you do on the plane ride to and from Raleigh? Uh, I watched, watch VODs. I watched back the VODs of our games to uh, review them. And um, I listened to music. Gotcha. Uh, listened to Tame Impala. That's about it. Gotcha. There we go. What do you what do you do for fun that's not VODs? I play oh, A Rams with my friends. 
That's that's all I do, and it's League of Legends, another League of Legends. Is, my entire life is consumed by League of Legends at this point. I'm I've just accepted it. I'll just play League of Legends 24 hours of the day. Respect. All right. Well, let's get into this past week. So, I was thinking about this before the, sh the show started. In the past seven days, we had CLG become NRG. We had officially. We had Bjergsen announce that he's officially just out. Like, no coaching, no management. He's just like, I'm done. Goodbye. Uh, we had the entire finals weekend. And then as of about an hour before the show, and I really appreciate her timing her announcement for Hotline League, uh, mm. Jack Jackie announced that she's stepping away from Riot and the LCS to focus on her health. Hope we hope she feels better, and uh, let's be respectful of her health as we go through the show. But obviously, that's a lot of things to happen in one week. This might be... I'm trying to think if there was ever a bigger week in LCS. Like, I know obviously we've had crazy weeks where like with roster changes and rumors like that, but just from a sheer amount of things happening in a one week period, it's been pretty bonkers. So, uh, yeah, a lot to get into. I don't know, Mark, if you there's want also, is, go ahead. I was gonna say, there's also the rumors of dig and hundred thieves looking to sell their spot. Those kind of um, got squashed a little bit. Um, yeah. By the guy who reported them. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, for people who are not familiar with the scene, you might hear us like something like that and think, "Oh, those teams are trying to sell their spot." But what you need to realize is that like every team is permanently willing to sell their spot for the right amount of money, and are like pretty frequently putting out feelers. I guess there's some like C9 is probably not going to do that. Team Liquid is probably not going to do that. But for like a lot of the teams, though, it's like they're in permanent feeler mode. Yeah, um, John, John Robinson kind of talked about it on the uh, 100 Talk pod, uh, podcast that he went on. The last one they ever did was last night, and he talked about it a little bit. That's over on the. 100 Thieves subreddit if people want to look at that clip, but yeah. So. Yeah, so that one, that one squashed, but it was it was something else that happened and blew up on, on Reddit. Um, so what you guys yeah. are telling me is that LCS is dying and I'm moving to EU. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Understood. Yes. Uh, you I can't ask you feelers. what team you would join because I think that that would break some sort of tampering rule, but. I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's dead. It's dead. Do you want actually? Do we want to all talk a little bit about the sort of conversation that I saw online about like the arena being empty at the LCS weekend? Because I saw a lot of that stuff, and I don't know how we all felt about it, but I I thought maybe we could we could dive in and chat a little bit and share our personal impressions. What do you think, Fudge? Was it empty? Uh, from my perspective, it was like eighty percent full. Uh, maybe not the top, the top like. I didn't see the absolute top of the stadium, but every when I looked at the crowd, I didn't see many empty seats, at least for our game. I remember um, after the GGS and FlyQuest series... Dude, that was so they, fucking dude, funny. Dude, we were so mad because we were told to do this like standoff thing, and we're going to wait till after the interviews and after like whichever team wins. We're going to wait for the interviews, and they're going to go to analyst desk, and then we'll do the walk-in. And we had to go there after the, the team that had two wins like so so as soon as one team got two wins which i think was fly quest no gds oh, no it was fly quest no it was fly, fly quest. after game three had two yeah yeah. yeah yeah fly quest and then we went to the venue had to wait like three hours for the games because it went to game five which was i was okay with because like it was fun watching like a game five series obviously but then they, you know, they kept it secret that there was a walk-in for some reason they had to keep it secret for the hype and then everyone left, and then we were just standing there, like laughing our asses off, because like we're just we're just gonna walk into an empty fucking stadium, and it was just uh, I don't know. I, that, it was that was so weird. funny. I couldn't stop myself from just tweeting. I was just I was sitting up in the in the upper areas watching with Drew, and I was just laughing my ass off because I was just like, why, 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 why? Like for those of you that did not watch the end of day one. What happened most was people, basic, most people. <laughs> basically what Fudge said, which is they went through the whole best of five. Then like 30 minutes pass, I think. At least 20, but probably like 30. I, I would say 20 is... is, is it, and is it's like bad. raining outside. Um, and so and it's getting late. And so everybody's leaving because also like, you know, you're going to go wait for your Uber or whatever forever. And so after everything is done and you think that you're going to... Like the broadcast is going to end, they're like... 
But wait just a second, because we've got Cloud9 here to deliver the fucking trophy, and you guys walk out, and you put it on stage, and I'm just the entire time, I'm like, no, 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 and, um, and it's so funny, too, because I was like, why didn't they just cancel this? Why didn't somebody go, like, uh, hello, we've got nobody in the audience, please cancel the walkout, like, and then there were all these, like, sweeping shots on you guys with the empty empty stage and i think they were able to use some of it as footage for the next day and like they could use the yeah. close-up shots to make it look kind of cool and all that stuff um and i don't i don't even look at it like this is not me dogging on the lcs right like i know other people would do that or whatever i just i think it was just a funny miscalculation that like yeah. they won't they learned a lesson from that they won't do it again but it was so it it felt comical in the moment so i, I thought mean i great. literally okay when i heard what the plan was they by the way the day before we had rehearsals the day before ggs and FlyQuest, all three teams went to the stadium to do rehearsals for like if you make the finals this is the walkout for the opening ceremony and everything and then when they told us the next day, or like it was that night, they didn't actually do the rehearsals for us to do the walkout. Like they didn't like actually fully plan it. So I'm kind of shitting on the LCS here. But anyway, they didn't plan it. So they so we didn't even know where we had to stand. Like they had to explain it to us like 10 minutes before we did it. And they had to like keep saying it to like make sure we understood. And then like as soon as I heard that we're doing the walkout after game five and like interviews and stuff like that, I was like, there's no one has no one thought this through like everyone's gonna leave no one is staying for like you know just just to stay in the stadium for fun and then obviously what happened happened they learned them i'm sure they as you said they they learned i'm sure yeah, yeah. it was I just, it was just i'm sad you guys had to wait there but it was funny <laughs> what you both failed to understand was that it was a comedy bit not a hype bit yeah and, uh, enough, like, ca catching up with lcs audience sorry <laughs> lcs yeah. audience isn't here <laughs> Catching up with double of teaching <laughs> LCS. <laughs> People in chat are like, yeah, I was there. I would have watched. I would have stayed. This is funny. All right. Uh, on, on the uh, the the fullness thing, I was I was talking about this a little bit to some people too. It's just unfortunate that like the most populated region of the, the place is the side, like the, the long sides, because that's where the best screens are for viewing. And they take the shot down from one of the sides so you don't see the, the near side, and then the far side is blocked by the screen that they're filming on. And then the corners, no one wants to sit there because the corners are the worst, but that's the only part of the seating that you can see. Um, so it does make it visually look really bad. Plus the entire rows, you can kind of see in front of the casters, those are entirely empty too, um, because just like so that they had a view and that we could walk around and stuff like that. So um, so one I thing know. I heard that, that somebody was talking to, I was talking to... Uh, a, a random person that I, I ran into outside of the venue who was telling me that I guess in one of the newer venues in the US, they had to, they went and changed all of the seats, the colors of the seats, because in this venue, the seats are all red. And if when they're black, it's a lot harder to see that yeah. they're empty. But yeah. when they're red, it's just like a bright red, and so like it's it's an issue in this arena. But apparently, in one of the newer arenas, they made that same mistake, and then they went through and like literally reupholstered or covered all the seats because they would just get flamed for it always looking empty during sports games. So I think it's just a confluence of things. I mean, I know some people will say copium or whatever, but like there was no point in time where I was ever looking out being like, man, this place. I mean, it was definitely not as full as Chicago, but also like I don't know, it's Raleigh. Like I don't I don't expect it to be. As full as Chicago, yeah, I mean, so I, I honestly, uh, I still think it, it should have been more full. There were some sections that were pretty, like the corner sections. I know they're not great seating. And I understand why those would be the last things to fill in, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't fill in at all. Um, so I don't know. I uh, it did did feel a little bit more empty than a uh, Chicago or something, but I yeah. Know. I mean, actually, Papa Smith in the chat feels like it was more full than Chicago and Houston. So I don't know. Maybe it's also hard because I don't know the size capacities versus all of them. But um, yeah. yeah. Also, okay. I'm just going to say this. Maybe this is when I get in trouble with a bunch of people. <laughs> there are a bunch of people that were angry about it being on Easter. And I'm like, there are sports games that happen on Christmas Day. Like, I don't. Like I'm not religious, and so I'm sure that that's a, a pretty big disconnect. But I just did not think that like, like there were so many people that would message me that were like, "Can you believe that they're doing this on Easter?" And I was like, "I just don't." 
I mean, people could still watch. Like, if anything, they can just watch. They can have it on wherever they're at. I don't know. Go hunt eggs and then afterwards well, turn it on. So, yeah. Hunt eggs. My bigger issue was that they did not that they did not uh, shift the LEC schedule for it, um, and that they delayed the start. That they so much so that they had to delay the start of Sunday by half an hour because LEC was running over. Uh, like that's something that I was really annoyed about. Where I was like, they went on this big old rant about scheduling. Well, that's and, that's where I was going to go. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure around the scheduled start time of the LCS, uh, Valorant, CB Lol, and LEC were all going on. Um, and it's comedic to me that like the schedule was changed. One of the reasons being to avoid overlap for viewers and stuff like that. And then our finals is when we have the most overlap we've ever had. Like it was, it was worse than even before we cared about overlap, which is just weird to me um so yep that was a that was something that that frustrated me quite a bit yeah <clears throat> well anyway uh anything else okay should we we can talk we'll take calls on everything um and hopefully we can aim stuff a little bit more towards fudge but i would i think it's probably fair to take at least one or two calls about things like the clg energy news and the bjergsen news and the commissioner news stuff, and there's so much to dive into, so I guess we should just start going on it. But uh, Mark, Fudge, we... what do you think about the scene? Are you are you a scene thinker, or do you just head down, play a Rams and pro a games? Scene thinker uh, in what way? Are you talking about the LCS? Yeah, like just the scene. How how the scene? The doing? like about that the the stuff that like the industry side of it or the business mm. side of it. Like, do you think about LCS viewership ever? Do you oh. think about? I mean, I think about LCS viewership a lot. It factors in it's all about like my career's longevity, obviously. I mean, you uh, say that, but like a lot of pro players, are like, oh no, man, it's something I can't control. So I just show up and lock I in mean, my champion. I can control it like a tiny bit. Like, obviously, I could be like streaming every day and doing a bunch of content and trying to like push the LCS a lot. And I could definitely be doing a better job of that, that's for sure. Um, I am definitely lazy on that front. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm a little bit worried. Because, you know, <laughs> I just don't think viewership is very good, to be honest. Uh, it's to my I knowledge. I have a question for you. How, how do you feel about the schedule change? You know, I've, I've heard some pros talk about it, but I don't know if we've had any on, on the show talk about it. How have you felt about, like, Thursday, Friday? Have you at least, like, have you enjoyed it? Or do you miss no, Saturday, I... Sunday? I prefer Thursday, Friday, just because Friday night, usually people want to go out and do things. And Saturday is your off day now, so you can actually go out with your friends and, like, hang, like actually have dinner with your friends when it's not, you know, when everyone else is doing it, you know? Because before, it was, like, Sunday's my off day. People, for the most part, like, don't really want to go out as much on Sunday. Um, and it's just, it's just a lot worse for your life. Um, in terms of like viewership, I have no clue like what it was like for like but for the LCS. I don't know if it was better or worse, but generally, I I actually prefer it as a player. Well, while we're we're going through this, I think Mark is going to start pulling takes. Uh, so make sure you're dropping those in the sub call or sub sure. takes sub topics uh, or I'll do the topics. spiel. Yeah, I'll go for it. In case there's yeah. some Cloud Nine fans who have never come here before, too, this is a live call-in show, so you can go ahead and join the Discord with Travis. I just spam in chat. Uh, that's where we'll be pulling the takes from. Go ahead and join Pleb Calls or vo uh, Sub Calls Voice Channel when you get in there. Mute microphone, uh, and then in the text topics channels, Pleb Topics and Sub Topics text channels. That's where you go ahead and write your take down. If I like it, I'll pull you into the waiting room, which is a voice channel you'll hang out in until it's your turn to come on air. We'll do a quick mic check, make sure things work, and then you'll be on air talking to Fudge about how they're going to destroy T1 in their revenge match at MSI. Uh, so, I uh, by the way, I agree with you, Fudge. I would say that. TGI prefers LCS on the weekends. Travis Gafford prefers LCS on Thursday, Fridays. Um, mm, okay. I can draft on Sundays and do other things on the weekend. And mm -hmm. it's just really tough to do that on whenever you've got LCS on the weekend. So I don't know. I don't know what the future, future holds. I mean, viewership, I don't think is... Viewership's got to be down this split. I haven't seen anything yet about where it's like taking everything together but yeah i mean i feel like it's probably down at least 10 or 15 percent well, esports charts already did that did they did if they you, do it you... for everything i thought they just did it for playoffs but maybe i misread it no that's 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 just spring split so if okay. you go sort by 
games. It's it's at around 110, 109,000, I believe. And spring or summer last year was at 124. So so we're down from that, summer. With normally spring is stronger. So yep, <clears throat> yep. Cool. Good news. Um, the, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Who wants to look at McDonald's with me? <laughs> <laughs> I will open up a burger joint, and all the LCS pros will be just regular employees there. Dude, that would be sick. And it'll be come see your favorite pro players these days. The drive through. I didn't want to be too. I thought this was too doomer Call to put on Twitter. Flip, fuck. I, I thought this was was too doomer to put on Twitter, but I tried to start one of those like quote tweet chains where it's like, share your plans for when esports die, your career plans for when esports dies, and everybody Jesus could just. Christ. Be like, oh, I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to go do that. Um, yeah, fun times. All right, uh, what's up? We got Mark pulling takes right I'm now. I'm pulling people, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Uh, let's see, Fudge, I mean, you. how did you feel about the finals? Because I think Sven was a little disappointed in like the team's performance in those first couple, like he seemed more frustrated that it, it took so long rather than like, haha, we won. I mean, I think he's happy they won, but, or that you guys won, but he seemed kind of frustrated. What was your vibe? Um, yeah, I mean, all of us had the expectation that we were going to stomp finals, to be honest. After watching GGS fly, we felt like they were really bad. And uh, the first two games, we did not play well, very clearly. Uh, and got stomped in early game um so even though we won which is nice uh at least from my perspective what i think the other players feel and definitely how i feel is just that like we want to do well internationally because lcs was already sort of expected for us to win after we 3 0 flyquest in playoffs we already had like the expectation we were just going to win finals and I could see why he was disappointed, but realistically, like if we think about it, like guys, we're champions. Let's let's not be depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's not be sad about the series. Obviously, we're all gonna make mistakes, and we're kind of expecting that we we're gonna have a little bit of like burger flip early games because GGS's early game is actually pretty good um, compared to like the other LCS teams. They're way more aggressive. I think River finds really good gank angles, and he exposed us quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, a little bit. Still a lot to work on. Still a lot to work on for sure. But hey, bro, I yep. won. I'll well, it looks it. like we got some folks in the waiting room. So uh, Mark is yeah, trying to start. Was, I'll, I'll chime in quickly. It was funny seeing their interviews and you guys trying not to be doomers about it. Being like, man, we knew we'd get a fucking win. And then we just like didn't smash them like we thought we would. Yeah. Sven was like, I, it's cool that I can play bad and still win a title. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he played bad. I mean, maybe the first two he, games. He, he, said so, he said something like that, like, uh, you know, I don't have to play my best or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah he I was don't. like, I, I've got such good teammates that I can struggle in the first couple of games and still win or something. Although I, I feel like every player on our team feels that way. They're like, oh, if we play bad, like our teammates will generally do better than the enemy team. So yeah. it'll be okay. You know? I remember that was, that was what... I feel like that was the quote that Peter had back in 2015 when CLG finally won. That was just like, he was so happy where he's like, if any one of us steps, you know, has like a bad game, the other four just step up. And I feel like that's how a good team, you, you find a good team oftentimes because there there is always variance in every match. And so you'll always right. have one player that's going to have a rough go of it or something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I think that's, I think that's cool. All right. Looks like Mark is off to go grab our first caller. Shout out to uh, add-ons for clearly Jason Krieg, Cool455, Sushi Gasm, and Matt is Bleak, as well as Inwellen, and it's Veritas for the subs. Thank you, everybody, for that. We got a lot of people in the chat today, so it should be a fun episode. Uh, Mark should be back in just a moment with our first caller, and here we go. It's Dean. Dean, where are you calling from? Hello, I'm calling from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And you've called in before, yeah? Yeah, I was the speaker guy that gave you shit that one time. Oh, right. Okay, what do you want to talk about on the show? Yeah, um, basically, I think that there's a lot of people in the LCS Discord that were hard flaming Vikla, Winsome, and Ayla like, all season long, uh, just with their inconsistency issues. And it's like, guys, all they need to like improve is just to like, have a player coach. And like C9 kind of showed that having those positional coaches can 
drastically improve their consistency. So you feel like those guys just need player coaches? Yeah. Is that the take? What the hell? (laughs) Did you have another take as well, Deed? Yeah. No, the, the other take was C9 is the best Western team at MSI. I so. said that's the one I, I was pulling you for. Oh. I've been oh. trolled. Oh, my it's bad. Fine. We'll, just, we'll just go off the other. It's fine. We all make mistakes. I mean, Let's go off the other take. No. Why, why no, not? Don't Shut up, Mark. Fuck you. Do you want to talk, <laughs> talk about FlyQuest? Honestly, okay, I'll, I'll respond to the first take. I didn't see a, that many people flaming Vickless throughout the regular season. Did that really happen? It started there at the was, end, towards the end. There was a lot end. of people. Towards, towards like, the second round, Robin, when he was hinting a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, the Ayla thing, like, honestly, I kind of feel bad because I feel like me and Sven, like, joking on broadcasts about how bad Ayla played kind of pushed also a lot of fans to, like, shit on him even more. Like, yeah, I mean, I agree he underperformed for sure. Um, but Winston during regular season, I think, played pretty well. Uh, and I don't think he was, like, a liability in playoffs. Like, I don't think he was, like, clearly, like, the reason they were losing games. So, I think Winsome actually did really well. Vikla, obviously, I think, like you guys said, towards the re- end of regular season playoffs, I think underperformed compared to all the other mid laners, in the, at least in the top three. I think he was definitely the worst. Um, but the player coach thing, I mean, it's hard to say. I definitely think, like, player coaches help a lot on C9. We obviously have a lot of them and really good ones. Um, but... It also is up to the player to be willing to work with those player coaches and be very open and to receive the criticism, which sometimes players aren't like that. So, yeah, I feel like that would fix them. I feel like just get a player coach is. I mean, you could just use that for any player that's underperforming, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know, Dean, if that that just feels so broadly applicable. It's hard to just be like, well, just get a player coach, and every every player will suddenly be as amazing as C nine players. So. I mean, I mean, Palafox went from, like, bottom two mid in the league to, like, stubbed for uh, all pro when he got DeMonte as his direct player coach. So yeah, but you also might just – that might just be the fact that, like, teams who have player coaches are also naturally going to have better infrastructure and, like, it's correlation versus causation, right? So Well, and, like, sure. he wasn't on CLG immediately during that time period, like – he had splits where he wasn't with CLG and those exact teammates and stuff like that. So, I mean, not to say that player coaches are bad, but I think here's here's my hot FlyQuest take. And Fudge, you can tell me what you think. If FlyQuest never had this support debacle thing that happened, they probably would be at MSI. I think the fact that they, like, if they just either stuck with Winston from the entire time or Ayla never had this, like, didn't show up at first or whatever... Um, it wouldn't cause this like rift potentially or the need to swap things in the middle of like the postseason. And the fact that they were up and should have won game four against Golden Guardians, they threw it. They were not a great team. Golden Guardians is currently the better team. And I don't disagree with the fact that they won and they're representing us, but I can't help but feel that like if this team just was like any team that had all five from the beginning, they probably just go to MSI. They still lose you in the finals, I think. But like, um, you know, they would probably be our reps. I don't know. What do you think? I, I, I agree with that. I think it's really, really difficult. Well, to be honest, it's like, it's hard, it's hard to say, like, because, I mean, we swapped, we swapped players as well in the middle of the season, and then we just got better. So, I mean, I feel like it's, it's, it's hard to tell with that, but I do feel like Winsome, like, I feel like they should have just made Winsome the main support after, like, a couple of weeks of Ayla, because I feel like he was pretty clearly better at least when i we scrimmed against him and i feel like whenever i watched the sage matches i just felt like i never saw ayla do anything that was better than winsome um and i feel like they just kept him because like that was what was supposed to happen um yeah i I agree with you that if winsome was just the player the entire split and i'm not sure if it's true if ayla was the player the entire split to be honest i i'm not too big on ayla personally maybe a bit of oce ego with that but uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I do I do have confidence that if Winston was the start of the entire split, they would have been in finals with us. Yeah, because I, I think, like, um, it, it's obviously hindsight bias to look back at it, but, right. like, I assume if I was to insert myself into FlyQuest, what happened was, like, a- a- Ayla signed with you under the premise that he was the starter, and once he gets mm-hmm. his visa, just because you were 8-1 and one with Winston, it's like, it's not your spot anymore, it would feel terrible for him. Yeah. They try to go back to the original Well, they were also losing they- in scrims, right? So, like, they all thought they were not as good as... That was the whole thing in the beginning of the split was that like yeah. FlyQuest was getting trashed. So they're probably winning, but then like the vast majority of the time they're actually losing. So they're like, 
oh shit, maybe we're not that good. We need to actually win. Did FlyQuest yeah. themselves say that they were losing in scrims a lot? Yes. Yep. Okay. Spica, in an interview when they were still doing pretty well, made a joke or two about how they were like getting crapped on or something. Yeah. And like every team remember. that I interviewed throughout the first half of the split was like, yeah, we're not really sure why FlyQuest is winning because like we just trashed them all week long in scrims. Like it, it was just. I don't know. It's weird because we were scrimming like TL, and apparently TL was just shitting on everyone in scrims. And I was like, really? Like, that's really weird. So I, when I heard when I hear these rumors about scrims, I'm just like, are these even true? Like, are people just making it up based off, like, one scrim set? Like, where they won, like, 4-2 or something? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're shitty on FlyQuest and scrims? Because that's how pro players are sometimes. I mean, um, I heard it from enough places, including FlyQuest, yeah. that, like, I'm pretty confident they were not doing well on scrims early I on. I think if Fly said it, I think if Fly said it themselves, it's, it's probably yeah. true. Yeah. All right. I mean, it, this this split was also just the like scrim data is fake news kind of split where like TL and EG were gods supposedly in scrims and FlyQuest sucked in scrims and like here we are. So let's move on to the actual take from Dean, which is you said that C9 is going to be the best Western team at MSI, Dean? Yeah. Yeah. As okay. of right now, I think that they're better than either two LEC teams and obviously they're better than Golden Guardians. Okay. Uh, any any empirical evidence or any reasons why you have this thought? Uh, the like, biggest thing is, like, they've shown that they can carry through every single role, and we know historically that they can carry through every single role. And, like, their weakest player is Zven, who should have been first All-Pro, and he's maybe not... He's not Caria, but he's, like, a tier or maybe two right below that, which is still really damn good. So, like, I think if any Western team right now is going to upset like a, a JDG or like a T1, C9's probably the best shot at doing it. I'm going to be honest. I don't really watch LEC closely, so I actually don't know if they're even good. I just know that... I just know that... Oh, I'm not missing anything. Jesus, man. This is an NA fan right here. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just know that, like, I, I talked to MNS, and I know MNS watches it really closely, um, and he was like, oh, I feel like this year LEC is weaker than previous years. Um... So that seems to be, like, the community take as well, I feel like. Yeah. So, I mean, if everyone's saying it, maybe there's a reason for it. I don't know, because I don't watch them that much. I do think that at least whenever I watch the top lane as, like, play, like, I watch, like, snippets of, like, the lane phase and, like, what they're doing in lane in these certain matchups, I'm a little bit confused. Like, I don't feel like they're playing very well. Um, so I'm not really, like, worried. I think Photon's actually pretty good uh, when I watch him. I think he's probably the best top laner, when I, at least, that I, that I watch. Yeah. Um, and... It's hard to say who's who's going to be good at MSI. I, I still think there will be close matches between us and whichever LEC team it is that's that's first. But I've always felt like the I feel like the past two years, like when we played a, a Fnatic last year at Worlds, and then when we played against Rogue in 2021, I didn't really feel like LEC teams were like that much better than NA teams. At least like not that much better than us. I always felt like it was really close. So the NA the EU better than NA meme I think is a bit gone at this point like after like g2 the g2 team that was like obviously really good uh in finals so mm -hmm. i don't think we're gonna like shit on any eu team i don't think they were clearly better i don't think i mean eu is still a good region i think overall eu is still a better region than na so I mark we you and i haven't really been watching much right or have you caught any of the finals and all that no i just i just watch stuff in the morning before like our broadcast someone always puts up vods of random other things and sometimes on the weekend i'll, I'll watch their games um, I think that's weird, If and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the top four currently in spring, or yeah, in their spring season, uh, were, are, no, excuse me, the top four from their summer season, oh my god, I can't speak, top four from their winter season are currently bottom in their spring season, so it's like, things are kind of up in the air right now, um, they still have a, while, a ways to go, they have to finish their, like, group stage and then get to their playoff stage so they they're like going right up against the the very limit because g2 um, g2 qualified in spring right uh yeah g2 yeah, qualified or winter. winter yeah they qualified in winter uh God, we are I such americans I... well, we are americans guys we do not pay attention to any other country fudge, moving on fudge with his oh. heavy australian accent says we are such americans guys <laughs> that's how you know he's been in the lcs long enough um Fudge's American accent was great when he was making fun of uh, 100 Thieves in the uh, C9 React video. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty good that. at it at this point. 
So, like, there's all those rumors that LCS is going to move to LEC's, like, system, and I'm really hoping that LCS holds off on, like, committing to that plan until we actually see... Like, it'd be very fascinating if G2 just sucks at MSI but qualified, like, months ago or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm very curious, so... I, uh, I have been cautiously optimistic for this schedule of the LEC, but I have been also vocal about the potential downsides, which like, I think a lot of people are just ignoring. Um, one of which being qualifying for championships point. I fucking hate just generally across the board. Um, and like people like qualifying for tournaments months before that tournament happens with how league of legends is volatile. And then I also am not sure if the viewership, um, kind of strain the tax on, on viewing it so much burnout um will be very bad by the time summer rolls around so yeah hey dean thanks so much for the call anything you want to shout out before we move on to the next caller uh no just want to shout out uh alienware uh congratulations fudge for winning finals really excited Thank to you. see you guys at msi and uh hopefully uh y'all make us proud one way or another yeah have a good one catch you later well, Jack. I, I mean, I, they, they qualify, but am I am I wrong in saying that there's some championship points, or is it not championship points at all? I thought it was um, they they auto qualify, but someone can get more points than them or something. I don't remember. Yeah, there are championship. No, points. no. I think I think Jack is saying he doesn't want. So Mark is doing the thing oh, where he oh, re okay. reacts to Twitch chat without providing context. Jack in the chat says no champs points. It, G two qualify months early sucks, and I so I assume he's saying like I don't want there to be we champion point. That because of that okay okay well yeah, jack yeah, yeah. this friday let them know at the owners meeting um that dude don't want that uh um, i have a thing about the format um i don't know if i'm completely leaking and i'm gonna get in big trouble here but um never did, travis did you hear anything about three international tournaments okay so this is why i have heard that there are supposed to be three splits is the idea is that everyone will move to three splits so that they can add another international tournament Okay, I might have just I might just get fined like 10k for that one, but it's I okay. What? I, I, it, fine. It was me. I told no, Fudge here, here, here. No, I'll see. I'll see. I, I asked Fudge before the start of the show to drop me that line so that I could leak it, um, because they can't find me. So that was all me. Um, but yes, that That's is. But they, I mean, they they've kind of hinted at that for a while, right? Because like last. I think in the press conference at Worlds last year, they were saying they want to do more and they need to figure stuff out first and all that. So, like, I don't think that this is this should be that surprising. It also somewhat mirrors a little bit of what they do in Valorant. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that is why you'll start to see more stuff move to a, a situation where there are, like, three checkpoints, right, earlier on than MSI or whatever that becomes than Worlds. So... Uh, yeah. There you go. Just no, just no one clip this and put it on Reddit, and Fudge won't get in trouble. Yeah. We do clip this. Uh, thank you, C9 uh, sponsors. Great job, guys. Great job, all of you guys. <laughs> Fudge is like, if I can get bonuses from the C9 sponsors for shouting Jack, them out, it's the, uh, what Jack is it? Was it Michael fines. Jordan with the shoe situation where he got fined or something, but it was worth it? You know, let's just get, get the sponsors to cover the cost of the fine. Cloud9 <laughs> Stratus, woohoo. They send me lots of great merch. This. I'm wearing some Cloud9 Stratus stuff right now, actually, as you can see here. Let's go. I'm wearing a silver or the Shins uh, shirt. Anyway, let's uh, get our next caller. Okay, let's let's do that. Uh, in Willen, it's fair to us. Mad to the Jack and King Bonus. Thank you for the subs. Man, you just went with it, Fudge. I was really considering it in my head, and I was like, it's okay. Like, if I make this mistake, I'll never make the mistake again. I don't know. I mean, it depends. It. I guess what I would say is it depends on how you how you heard that information. Uh, uh, if Riot told it you, wasn't, then it wasn't. It wasn't through. It wasn't through C nine. Okay. Yeah. Then if it wasn't Riot and it wasn't C nine, then I think. Who knows? All right. Didn't, Matt didn't is here. Didn't you tell him, Travis? Didn't Didn't you? I did tell him. Right I did tell this? you actually. That's why he asked me. He said, "Travis, didn't you hear this?" It's because I told him. Um, yep. Actually, I did have a conversation with somebody at the finals, so maybe you heard it through that way. Whatever. Anyway, Matt is here. Matt, where are you calling from? Hey, I'm calling from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Vancouver, Canada. What do you want to talk about on the show? 
Yeah, I'm here to say that uh, Blabber will end his career as the near undisputable North American greatest player to play in the LCS. Wait, and when is he ending his career? Three, uh, whenever, whenever that may be, I think by the by the time it's over, he will be indisputably number one. And right now, he's only behind Bjergsen and Doublelift. Okay, what about Fudge? You don't think that he, that Fudge could end his career as the well, undisputed be, best? It's like I'm pretty sure I'm probably just going to be playing with Blabber for the rest of my career, and he's like a, a trophy ahead of me, so I'm kind of just fucked. Like hey, exactly, Bla- Bla- <laughs> Fudge can be number two. To, like, but you, I mean, if you start carrying him. him like how if you get way more MVPs than him, then it doesn't matter how many trophies he That's lifts. That's true, right? but Blabber's like okay, Blabber's good, so it's really hard to make like for me to play well, and then I like, maybe Blabber will just int, and then I'll just like I don't know, carry. I don't think that's gonna happen. Jungle is weak, so like if the jungle is bad, I'm just gonna lose. So like Blabber has to play well for me to win, and then if he plays well, then it's gonna be like I don't know, fuck this shit. Great. I'll be the greatest OCE player of all time. Okay, I, I already am, but I'll, I'll I'll keep that. Who else is up there with you? FBI, you can maybe say, but I don't think it's that close. Uh, no one else. Oh well. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the the fudge angle is actually a funny one that we'll, I guess we'll get into in a second. I I think I think I'm I'm super in agreement with the the caller. I already think Blabber is the best North American jungler ever. I think Smithy um, has more accolades. Uh, accrued over a longer career but like he was never individually like the dominant yeah, he was like of, the b player to the stars he, yeah he was he he was you know scotty pippen he was like that that level like you know he he played with great players he did great things he was he was an incredible jungler he's one of the he's one of the best players of all time in north america but he was never the dominant force on his teams um and Blabber has had the most individually dominant splits of, of junglers. Like, his 2020 season still crazy. Okay, I will say uh, one thing about Blabber. Is that the way he plays, he's either going to look like the best player on your team or the worst player on your team. So it's yeah. just, and, and, you know, he, he tends to be the best player on your team. So he's always going to look I mean, I, like the GOAT. I, I say this as someone who said that he was a little overrated this split. I feel like he's getting into Bjergsen MVP split territory where people are just like... Oh, he existed on a winning team. He must be the best player on that team and must be the most important one. And I, I'll say other since I'm already talking about how great Blabber is, I'll put the negatives out now too. Like I feel like you fudge the gap between you and the second best top laner is the biggest of any position in the league. Um, I think like 80 carries are super close. Supports are pretty close. Mid laners, junglers. Um, I I don't feel that way really about top. And like to that point, that's why like for me, like yeah, I think Blabber's going to be the best player or one of the best players of all time in North America. But like, I, I just think like speak is really good. Inspire is really good. Close is really good. I feel like impact is really good, but he doesn't, it's not that he can't do it, but he just doesn't do the things that you do. I feel like to um, play like the more aggressive style and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that was the only way I was ever going to win MVP was through that argument, to be honest, because <laughs> <laughs> like Berserker got MVP Everyone knows it was because of his draving game. In, I guess my quest, like everyone, that was the literally. No, 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 no. It, it was it was thirteen deaths in eighteen games. That, okay, that's actually, what it was for me. I actually want a conversation about this. Do you guys think that the MVP should be like the player that's the best on the bad team, like Gory or like I guess River, or you could say, well, River in playoffs, but not in, during the regular season, or like Prince on Fly because he's the one carrying every game that they win. I or don't do you think, think it should just be the best player. I don't think MVP league? should always go to the to a player on the best team. But I do think that it is very hard to ever look like an MVP on a player, on a team that is like, just not great. You know what I mean? Like, especially because of the way League of Legends works, where when your team is popping off, it like ends up doing so much for you and like your strength in the game. Like I think inherently because of the way League of Legends works, it's just going to be really hard for it to ever be a player who's on like a middling team. I'm not sure I agree with this though, because like, I feel like, for example, like 2021 summer when I was playing like top lane and I was like doing like these random like plays and like highlight plays. I feel like you can only really make those like big highlight moments that stick out in people's heads when the game is close and your team's like kind of inting, but you're doing well. Like if your team's is doing well and you're doing well, 
you're just going to slowly win the game and it's just going to look like clean but with no like flashy plays and i feel like when people think of mvp they think of like the flashy moments a lot of the time um, sometimes consistency i mean obviously like some some people vote differently than others but like i feel like when you have a really good team around you it's hard to like look stand out ish compared to if you're really good like if if you're like blabber level but you're on immortals you're gonna look absolutely insane and people will give you credit for being so good on a bad team do well. they i feel yeah. like that's not true right like so you had really? speaker on tsm last year mm -hmm. who had really good stats and was doing his best to make sure that team was alive and at the end of the split, everyone was like, Spica's fucking washed. You know, like the community had gone super anti Spica. And I, to the extent that I was frustrated, I was really happy he did so well this year because right. I was like, he's on fucking TSM people. Like, what do you want? No, that's fair as well. That's fair as well. I feel like there's some truth to what you're saying, but generally speaking, voters will tend to overcompensate for the top team to have all the best players. Like, it's happened so many times in like all pro voting history where like the number one team, especially if they're clearly the number one team, will just take home every single first team all pro uh, yeah. and usually the MVP as well. So I, I think there's some truth to the fact that like in league, if your team's just dominating, you don't need to like make some crazy like 1v9 play because like you're just winning already. Um, so I, I don't disagree fully with what you're saying. But for me on like the MVP voting angle, yeah, you have to be best in your role. Like I don't think you have to be the best player in the league. I don't want to vote. Like I don't like voting for who I think is the most skilled. I like voting for like what happened to me in the games, like what I think your actual performance was. Um, and that's what I do for all pro as well. But like one of the things for Prince versus Berserker that was hard for me and like, cause Revenge came on here and someone else, there was another pro player who had the same argument, which is basically like, if you took Berserker off C9 and plugged in another 80 carry, you guys are still probably the best team in the league. Assuming this 80 carry is like even halfway decent. Whereas if you took Prince off FlyQuest and plugged anyone else in, that FlyQuest team probably sucks. Um, or is at least significantly worse. So, like, you can make these kinds of arguments, and I do think they hold some water. But, like, at the end of the day, I think Berserker had a better split, and it's really hard for me to vote Yeah, for someone to be sense. MVP over who I put on my all-pro ballot. I mean, um, I'll admit the Draven game was what sealed the deal for me. Because going into that weekend, <laughs> I was like, okay, it's got to be Prince or Berserker. I guess we'll find out. And, like, Prince had a really good game earlier that day, too, where I remember tweeting, like, well, I guess it's Prince. And then the, the Draven game happened. Oh, yeah. And the, the Draven game happened, and I'm like, okay, well, never mind. Uh, I guess he saw my tweet and was like, fuck that. Um, it was it was literally the MVP game. Whoever wins that game and gets his team first, team all pro, is, yeah. is or uh, first in the regular season, was, was going to get MVP, which is, like, really troll that it comes down to that. But, like, I don't know. That's I, cool. I think it's, it's kind of fun. Original. I mean, I remember yeah. we talked about that in a hotline league leading up to it, where I was like, well, these guys are playing each other on the last day. Like, I guess we'll see how it goes. Um I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, but back to I mean, the the take because we should we should wrap up the take before we so we can we've got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, but Mark, do you think? I know you said he's already getting close to uh, Bjergsen territory. You feel he's, he might be have been a little overrated the split, but like, what are the chances that uh, this ends up happening in your mind? Um, I, I think he he'll go down as one of the best players of all time he's, he's the only player i'd say and like I, the fudge angle is an interesting one but like he's the only player right now who feels in the conversation to like him him and impact to keep climbing i guess um you would probably say like double lift bjergsen like i don't know where you rank rank smithy versus impact i put impact above him probably smithy and then like some other random people maybe before for blabber but he's active on the list right now and he's he's cleaning up a lot of championships he's winning slightly more than one a year on average right so like i don't know it feels pretty likely that he'll he'll get a couple more he'll probably do something at an international competition one of these times um i think he's absolutely going to to be top three by the time he's done like the caller said but fudge i i, I didn't even think about fudge having three already as well so like he can out, of out of my top lane splits i've won three out of four i think right and not yeah, so you, you just punting here. spring because you were uh, four, okay. uh, three, three out of five, three out of five. Wait, uh, no, yeah, I'm to lose? against my own take here, but Fudge has I... gotten three in an arguably shorter time because Blabber did split time 2018 2019 for a while, which Fudge didn't. Uh, so. I, I don't know if I'd count that though. I mean, I, I definitely think that like the weight, whenever C9 does win, like with Blabber, it seems like Blab is like the main person winning the games for them. Well, so... and if we want to get technical, 
impact split time with ray you know maybe impact wins a championship if they weren't doing that all right, all right. we're going in loops stuff, and you know? we're going we're right. going down tangents matt anything you want to shout out before we go on to a quick break uh i love shout out alienware as always uh great coverage uh, i'd like to shout out you travis for coming down to ubc in vancouver i think that's really cool uh, it's nice to see uh, yeah, mastercard nexus for my blabber player of the week statue i'm holding in my hand right now from a while ago that's really cool Ooh. and uh Lastly, uh, Riot Freak and the rest of the balance team over there. I think they're doing, a, they get a bad rap and they're doing a really good job. I'm a professional game designer and I think they, they do a really, really good job and the community should recognize that more. Nice. Thanks so much for the call, Matt, and uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right. Speaking of Alienware, we're going to take a quick break to talk about Alienware. Go look at their M18. They are sending this thing to me soon. It is their 18 inch notebook. It is awesome. You can get all the way up to a 4090 in it. Uh, you can get up to 64 gigs of RAM, uh, 8 terabytes of SSD space, if you would like. Uh, and yeah, this the uh, you can you can get in a 480 hertz refresh rate display on this laptop. That that is amazing. Uh, of course, you can also get uh, 2560 by 1600 at 165 hertz if that's your preference. We'll probably end up, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to grab that because that's a little bit uh, better for us as we're editing 4K video on the road. But I absolutely love this computer. Um, it is just fantastic. They're going to send it to me soon, and I am super pumped. It's going to be our workhorse for editing 4K video, uh, and we you know, we did that on the road this uh, this past week, and we're going to do some more of it. And I know a lot of people have said that they really appreciated when we were able to move to 4K uh, recently, and that was in part because of the fact that we can edit the stuff off of just a laptop and get some really beautiful coverage out for you guys so that you can see all those pro players in beautiful 4K. Look at the, hopefully their makeup from earlier in the day is still on their face. So look that, look at Fudge in, in the shadows right now. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. The lighting in my room kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be honest. Fun. It's fine. <laughs> Hotline League, we're not usually trying to uh, to get the, the best stuff. But whenever we're on the road, we want to get really cool shots of people in big arenas and all that stuff. So thank you so much to Alienware. Go check out the M18. You guys, you know, if you're in the market for a gaming laptop, you, you deserve to uh, take a look at this thing because it just became available recently and it's got some amazing stuff in it so thank you so much to alienware for sponsoring the show if you would like you can go use alienware.com slash travis to take a look at that m18 or any other computer on their roster of computers or monitors or all that stuff and uh all that would really really help so thank you so much to alienware for sponsoring the show all right we want to get into the next call uh it looks like we got some subs thank you better call saul king bonus uh kev man Kev Mendez or Kev Kev Mendez, uh, the Azarak, and then Evil Trenton just gifted five subs. Thank you for the five gifted. That's very generous of you. Yeah, it's rich, man. Give me some money, dude. Lately, my subs have been or my viewers have been going. They've been popping off. Somebody spent sent like five hundred dollars in bits, maybe seven fifty recently. It was insane. And then also some folks have been very very. Xbix shows up every now and then and drops like. 200 subs on the channel it's it's actually been insane um so and then this past weekend i got a tropical island uh in given to me which is a like 450 dollar magic card so people Damn. have just been very generous all right the dixie oh. cup who predicted that 100 thieves would reign supreme is showing up here where you there's xpix in the chat with 100 subs now my god okay Whoa. Yeah, you just say his his name and he just shows up and is drops five hundred bucks on this Twitch channel. All right, Can if I, I say money, it, will he show please? up? Yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. As much as I love you, Xbox, we got it. I will take you after the show because we got to get keep going. Uh, Dixie Cup, Dixie Cup. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Los Angeles, California. Los Ooh. Angeles, California. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, one, I want to give Fudge a lot of props. I, I'm a big Hunter Thieves fan, and I had you guys at fourth in my personal power rankings. So just want to be, I want to humble myself, give you guys some props. <laughs> so um, congrats on the win. Um, my question for you is, um, do you truly believe, um, and I think you had one of the best top lane splits of your career, that you can take on these top laners from Korea, um, from LEC, from China, at MSI, and if there's a player that you are truly most afraid of facing? Um, 
do I truly believe? Uh, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I think they're better than me. Um, but I do also think that in terms of, like, their actual, like, knowledge about the game and their decision-making when it comes to taking into account the entire map, I actually think, like, isn't much better than me. I could argue but I'm better than them at doing that. Um, but they are a lot better mechanically. They are a lot better at, the, like, laning, um, which... I'm going to be heavily focusing on once I go to London and start screaming against them. Um, and the top lane, I would say, is probably the best at that, like, mechanical and laning has probably been. I think he, I think when I watch him, he's definitely seeming to be the strongest. Uh, playing against him will definitely be fun. I don't know. I think Doran and uh, Zeus out of LCK, right, are the ones that yep. I missed yeah. Um, I think Zeus and Doran are both really, really good. I don't. I do think that Ben is better than them, though, um, from watching like all the games. So hopefully, I get to play against them, or hopefully, I don't get to play against them. Actually, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you get to scrim against them. <laughs> hopefully, I get to scrim against them. Some good practice, and then I play against. I don't know, like whoever a, t a bad top laner is. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I mean like right now, I'm worse than them. I'm worse than probably all the LCK and LPL top laners, but I have confidence in my ability to improve. So, yeah, you know I mean, I how much? It's because. Oh, go ahead, Mark. I was gonna say, do you think it's because um, they play in like more competitive regions and better practice environments, or do you think it's because you're lazy? <laughs> I think that I could be grinding the game harder. Uh, I definitely could be playing the game 16 hours a day instead of like 13. Um. So that's that's a fact, but I, <laughs> I, I also think the practice environment does help. Obviously, when I scrim against them, I think there's very noticeable improvement in my laning uh, throughout like the tournaments every single time I play against them. Um, when you're constantly playing on 8 ping, that helps a lot when it comes to mechanical practice, uh, when you're playing like solo queue as well. Um, and also, I mean, I mean, like obviously they're really good, so they force you to improve, otherwise you just get shit on in lane. So... Uh, that's a that's another another aspect of it. But yes, I, I, NA players are lazy. I'm only playing 13 hours a day. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's think... a, the show starts and you're like, I don't do anything other than League of Legends. My free time is ARAM and I don't consume TV. I just watch VODs. You know, it's like... Yeah, like, I could not be playing ARAMs at night, like three ARAMs a night, and I could be playing solo queue, like, like one or two games with like 40-minute queue times. Like, I'm sorry, guys. But the real question is, do you get eight hours of sleep? Because that's, that's a big mistake. That's like at least two to four hours, depending on how much you can sacrifice My right there. My best was trying to be a healthy human being. I'm so sorry, man. I mean, C9 was talking about that in their post game. I think it was... We we actually have uh, sleep. We have sleep rings, aura rings. I actually lost mine. Uh, but uh, we have sleep rings that track our sleep, track like REM sleep, deep sleep, everything. Um, and it holds us accountable so that we don't you know stay up until... 5 a.m. and we have to wake up at 10. How did, uh, what does Jack say if he's like, listen, I noticed you got too much REM sleep last night and not enough deep sleep. You need to start getting more deep sleep. Stop dreaming dreaming as much. <laughs> I, that has never happened. How, I, how dystopian is it? Do they show up you, and they give you like pills for like the certain kind of sleep that you need? They're controlling like if you're Yeah, not it's not that enough. bad. It's more so just like trying to like make the players care more about their sleep. Because generally gamers are like, oh, I'll just like stay up and play an extra solo game, and then they ha go into scrims and they're not very focused. Yeah, stuff like that. If I if I can ask a quick follow up question, sure. So for Fudge, um, just because I I feel like there has been obviously a, a gap between the East and the West a lot mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah. Do you think that is more mechanical skills, or do you think it's more macro skills, like in terms of like the game understanding? I think I think it's definitely mechanical. Like like majority, I would say like ninety percent of the differences in the mechanical understanding of the game. I mean, there's there's so many things that you can look at. Like you can like just look at their item choices or the drafts sometimes, and you can really show that like they are not thinking on, on such a higher level uh, when it comes to those things. Um, 
but it's very clear when you look at like even their solo queue ladder. Just look at all the players that play solo queue on that on like uh, in those regions and look at the way they play the game. They don't try to outsmart you by like, oh, I'm gonna like push this wave and then move here and then they're gonna have to do this and I'm gonna move here. They just fight you to the death and they outplay you mechanically. And like obviously there is some sort of like thinking behind it. It's not like completely mindless, but a lot of it is really just like understanding damage better by by repetition and you know focusing on that a lot, understanding champion ta uh, like ability timings, matchups, stuff like that. I think that's definitely. I think. Skip. Yeah, I don't know how you feel about it too, but like back in the day when I when we watched international events, it would be like even when North American teams and like European teams would have good early games, they would still actually like be even in gold or down because lane allocations and like map movements and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's true. Like, I don't think that the West is like way better than the macro wise. I, I don't think we're like smarter than them. I would just say like if I'm going to lose a game, it's likely going to be off of like getting outplayed in a team fight or getting outplayed in a team fight in a fight or a lane that, that's what i was going to ask about the team fighting one because there's like the i think the macro losses that we have in the, back in the day are not quite as relevant anymore but if there's one thing that we seem to get beaten out consistently i mean sometimes it's laning or like champ pools that they just play matches like skill matchups better that you know that kind of stuff but then yep. it feels like team fight setup which like isn't quite macro but it's also not quite mechanics so like i don't know what you classify that it's obviously yeah, no, it comes from reps yeah, and situations and stuff but yeah the argument of like what's mechanics and what's game knowledge is always a hard one but i mm -hmm. do think that the team fight positioning in general is a lot better uh like throughout the leagues like a lot of what we did as c9 this year or like the split um and i think a lot of the reason why we just ended up winning every team fight is because we would review a lot of team fight positions from lpl and lck um and a lot of just how how they seem to like consistently position depending on like the comps and we would copy a lot of the comps and position similarly and it would and get concepts or ideas off of that so i definitely think that they have some good ideas when it comes to how to team fight in certain comps and what they should individually be doing with certain champions and like a lot of like different champion concepts when it comes to team fighting um when i talk about like macro i mean more so like their overall like game plan according to their draft like you would see a lot of the time like them play like scaling drafts and then they fight to the death at herald at eight minutes and just <laughs> completely end the game away and like they go like mor like this is like i feel like i'm mls right now but like they go morello versus like no he no healing comps or something or they just like don't buy void stuff until like fi fifth item when the enemy team has them on there's like there's so many like item choices that i think Especially like I feel like European players are actually pretty good at uh, over over them um, that like you could tell they're not really focused on that aspect of the game like they don't or if they are they're just like for some reason missing some sort of ideas but yeah or maybe I, I I'm missing like, something um... maybe I'm missing something and they're just right I, I might be delusional as well like maybe they actually understand way more than me and I'm just completely delusional like a They're delusional macros. NA pig you know I'm just a delusional yeah. NA pig. <laughs> It's so beyond you, you don't even get why they think that. I think yeah. I think the other thing too is like the amount of times where like I watch Eastern teams just like start Baron five on five all alive and then just like brute force and engage or something off of it when like I know so many people are like, oh, never start Baron if the enemy team's up or like stuff like that. Like they'll, I see a lot, I feel like I, I see more Baron flips in LPL and LCK than I, I see in other regions actually. Hey, I think agree with that. Thanks so much, Dixie Cup, for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, quick couple shout outs. Uh, I want to shout out the NA men people. They're awesome. Um, Numi's been great at events. Um, Arsh, like all of them, super welcoming. And it's awesome to see um, just a ton of super fan love, like really bringing uh, a kind of another voice to the league. So love that. Um, and then... Shout out to honestly Mort Dog and the whole TFT dev team. I'm excited for they got more people on board. Um, they're gonna have three different um, sets each year, and it's been a blast. And I've been grinding a lot, um, trying to reach masters, and I've been having a ton of fun. So um, yeah, I appreciate it. And and just a quick correction, I believe Numi prefers to go by Numi goes Rars. Um, okay, that's the, Numi goes Rars is yeah, awesome. Full handles, yeah. And Numi I'll say and I'll say shout out the boys back home because they're my boys and they'd kill me if I didn't. <laughs> Thank you so much for the call and we'll catch you next time. All right. Thanks guys. All right. 
Mark, do you want to go grab our next caller? Uh, he's already gone. Hey, Travis, uh, who's joining 100 Thieves mid next, uh, next split? I would, I, do you know? I don't know. I have an, I, a rumor. Oh, I, I don't, about. I don't have a rumor. I have a theory, uh, okay. which, about like. About what? What are we talking about? Drama? Drama? I, I, I asked, I asked Travis as soon as you left, uh, who's the 100 Thieves mid lane next split? I feel like it's probably Jensen. I have no information. I have no nothing. That's a rumor I heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's the most, it's like the shortest path of resistance, right? Is like Jensen. I mean, yeah. Bjerg said Jensen, Bjerg said Jensen, Bjerg said Jensen. Like, yeah, yeah. What, how could it not be, you know? Also, like, if J Bjerg's not there, then that's like Peter's team now. And I feel like he's going to be like, yeah, this guy will get me to world. So fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know. All right. They're just slowly rebuilding Team Liquid. It's <laughs> Jensen. It's he's back, back for retirement. There, double lift. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bojo, welcome to the show. Where are you calling from? Uh, Dallas, Texas. Ooh, you're kind of quiet. Can you get a little closer to your mic? Oh, yeah, I can turn it up a little bit. Is that better? Uh, one more time? Good now? Uh, it'll work. Go ahead and just speak, okay. speak up. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Dallas, Texas, uh, you said. Yes. All right. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, so my question or my topic was based around the new MSI format, which I feel like is being a little under discussed. I know since we have two NA teams this year with, uh, Golden Guardian starting in like the play in stage equivalent, I think the like bracket stage, even though they're calling them groups, they're basically just extra brackets. Plus the main bracket stage will be better for NA to be placed, uh, I would say closer to their true level, which is like, you know, between third and fourth with EU, but it allows them to at least stretch their legs as a, as a region more than, I mean, if you think about like NA Worlds last year, <laughs> six games of six best of ones and they are out the door, at least for group stage, uh, except for EG. But I think EG looked way better than C9 or uh, 100 Thieves. But that's, I'm a C9 fan. I say that painfully, but uh, I think that, yeah, it'll give them a better chance to show show what they're made of in best of fives, even if they have less international experience in them. Uh, Fudge. Okay, I have to ask. Oh, good. Fudge, do you know the format? I was about to ask that same I question. Literally, I literally told you I don't know the format. Right before our game, we were doing makeup. I told you yep. I don't know the fucking format. You told me it was double elim. That's all I know. Yeah, but then you qualified. You, I it's don't been like care, two days. Man. Just let me play League of Legends. I don't care. Moving on. I mean, tell me the format. Yeah, Go so ahead, guys. Explain uh, for the audience. They, they, for the, was, for the I'll, audience. I'll, I'll spoil this. Like, Fudge and Sven were they uh, doing interviews for, like, some Riot, you know, feature, I guess, about, about uh, MSI. And they both got asked, you know, like, what do you think about the <laughs> format? And both of them had the same answer where they're like, uh, I don't really know. They're like, do you think it's going to help you or hurt you? And they're like, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll tell you right now travis if you want to pull most up informed esports pro by the way just to let you guys know um uh, okay, <laughs> that if work you can pull it up so i can, I can walk him through yeah it. Actually, uh, the top... i'll go try to find the graphic i mean the graphic is kind of confusing to be honest but no no no. go go to leadpedia the graphics are terrible we ran like a little like explainer by freak which we also started at the start of the year and it's got like circles like flying around it's all animated and shit i'm like just just show some brackets this is like so confusing for fudge it's actually very easy I it's a they top eight double e uh, it, it's a top eight double elim for you because you're in, you're already in the main stage because you you won your league so you're you're already just in a top eight double elim bracket nothing fancy so, about so it. the t the four teams that are already in the main stage are this the four major seeds the first seeds of five the major oh. wait the didn't five? he previously wouldn't he have previously had to go through a a, a group stage yes so it's not it is different yourself man I do you're all delusional. I said yes. EG played in the play-ins last year. That's how they lost to G two fucking eight times in a single tournament. I Fair remember enough. this. Um, no, so uh, there's there's five teams preceded in, and it's the four major regions plus one extra for Korea because they are like the reigning world champs or Makes something sense. like that. That's so, right. That's right. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So everyone else has to qualify in. Um, there's there's a seed from Europe, China, North America in there. And like realistically, who Golden Guardians has to beat to get their spot is probably PSG. Uh, Vietnam's in there as well. Japan, this kind of stuff. Oh God! Look, like look at all this. Look at like this. This is not helping. Just keep scrolling. Dude, this, this is, is basically this is... what the. I mean, this. 
If I put up the Leakpedia thing, it's just going to flashbang our whole audience because it's that's true. All white. Yeah, it's so, just like giant, and then there's just like tiny little blue. So this is things. this is the play-in stage, which yeah. You Fudge want me to show plans or about. playoffs? I, I think we can ignore plans because Fudge doesn't need to know that. Look, okay. look how easy this is. It's just a double elim bracket. Got it. <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. What, how do you what, feel what about it? it? How do I feel about it? I don't care, man. Like, just let me play League of Legends. I don't understand how you. Don't I think care. so. I don't think you okay, know. Okay, 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 no, 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 no. So no, this okay. is how you about... playing League of Legends, Fudge. Just so you okay, know, okay. like that's know what that. this You're is. Playing it differently. Bad. Normally, bad. when you go to an international tournament, every international tournament you've been to before had a group stage you had to play in, and that meant you had to play a bunch of different teams, which probably affected how you scrimmed and all this stuff. Now you know who you're going to be playing as soon as play-ins are done. You might even know beforehand, actually, depending on how the seating goes. I, I'm yes. not quite sure. So, okay. you so can... how do you think this will help me? Let, get, let me answer. <laughs> let, give me let, give me an answer. Go. I'll give you an answer that you'll then repeat back to me. I think this will help you in two ways. Number one, it's a lot easier to prep. Um, I, I would assume that's good for your opponent as well. But with C9 having diverse drafts, diverse play styles, I think this will be really good for you guys. I also think double elim because. I think North America has always sucked really bad in best of ones, tiebreakers, these kinds of like high profile games. I feel like we mentally boom. Um, I feel like we have more pressure on us or like we have this like stereotype that we just suck and we're always fighting uphill against that. Um, so I think this will help in that sense. Now, sometimes our week one suck. We used to be a week two region. I don't really know. Um, but at the very least, you then have a second life in the losers bracket where you will then get a best of five against ideally someone who has lost to one of these other major regions that uh you can then beat hopefully as well and that will be a big dub for most north american fans i think and hopefully for you as well that you will get a five game series against probably europe maybe pcs i don't know um but the downside is there's seems... a chance they only play against two teams yes but even even worst case scenario to the caller's point about like getting zero six if you go zero six yes you're out but that's the same amount of games you would play in a, a group stage so it's not any worse. It's it's not really any less games usually. Yeah, yeah it just I, uh, might be oh, sorry. easier to go zero six. Go ahead, caller. Um, sorry, I just felt like I hadn't been saying anything, and I wanted to add that it's also more beneficial to the point where since best of fives, obviously, if you win a game, you are guaranteed another lost game. Like you have the opportunity to lose again. So unlike the hard six count, like you could potentially even if you lose two best of fives and leave they could go to five games and that way you play almost double the amount of games you played at worlds just getting seated into groups which will at least give you a bigger opportunity to like I, I think the biggest thing with na and world's performances is that they always just look awful because they lose these close best of ones even if they win a couple of them they don't really get a chance to show themselves what they're what they can do and like evolve drafts i think it might make them look a lot better personally but that's also like some hopium stuff well I guess. Um, oh, go ahead. All right. Did I, did I convince you of anything, Fudge? I mean, I'm happy that I get to play more games. If, you know, I think it's very likely that you'll get to play more games. I don't think we're going to get like 3 0'd by like a PCS or EU team, to be honest. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we get to play more games. I don't know if the prep thing really matters, to be honest. I think it's sort of. I mean, you could say that I'm going to play against a play-in team and I'm going to see them play and then they're not going to see us play, so it's a higher chance that we'll have, a, you know, we'll have an advantage in draft. Um, in terms of, like, what you said about the best of ones of, like, NA not having, or, like, being scared or something, I'm not really sure the lot. I don't really get it, to be honest. I, I don't really understand what the, the reasoning is behind that because, like, in best of fives, like, generally we're just worse than the opponent. So best of fives will just make us be high i would say i would say not maybe, maybe we'll take a game but i just feel like it's less of a chance that you'll beat a team like in a best of five that's better than you than in a best of one um but na also tends to have bad practice in na so the when you get to play a best of five you get to evolve and improve through your mistakes that the enemy team exposes and then we will have a way to improve and then play better in the next game very good. Yeah, the best of one argument might also, the worst of it might predate Fudge a little bit. But uh, there's been a lot of years where like all NA needs to do is win this one game, and not even against the good teams, like like a Flash Wolves or something, and we find a way to lose them, or we int 
Well, oh, I will tell yeah, you we about. Terrible. I'll give you a history lesson, actually, of uh, 2021 group stage where C9 plays against Rogue in a tiebreaker best of one, and we win. So, uh, and we get to quarterfinals. Perks finals. carried you guys, though. I agree. He played on that game. <laughs> All right. Without Perks there, with his EU blood running in his veins, and he and loses Didn't that he one. Into inspired by W back over the walls, LeBlanc? I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I remember about that game. <laughs> he, he was he was either carrying you guys or inting you guys. So there was no in between that tournament. If I remember for him, Mister Mojo, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, no, actually, I don't think so. Thank right. you. Thanks so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. All right, off to grab another caller. Mark goes. Perfect. Mark, there it goes. Okay. Thank you. Huge thank you to Ixbix for the 100 gifted subs. That is bonkers. Morning Starts, thank you for the sub. Uh, Red Wire, Colombiano XP, so many things, and the Bald Goose, and the Scam Train just started. Everybody, get your primes out, because the Scam Train is going. Double G is here. Double G, where are you calling from? Uh, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. What do you want to talk about on the show? So, my main call is that even though viewership has been down year over year and split over split, uh, that Jackie has still done a great job in terms of shifting the focus of LCS from a bit more of a traditional sports league to actually putting players first. I know I watched Mark Z's uh, blame game on this, and he was talking about a lot of how the 2017 to 2018 era was a shift from five players in a dream where you had a lot of players that would stream a lot and they would be very uh, vocal in the community. They would be on Reddit. They would be directly interacting with fans. And when that shifted to this more sort of like corporate era, you had players shifting away from that. And I think that this is a change that over the last five years is probably a little bit overdue but it's at least a step in the right direction where you're putting players first. And, I mean, segments like Keeping Up With Doublelift, where I wouldn't have ever watched a segment piece of uh, Fleshy from Immortals, but Mark Z put on a great show with Fleshy, and I watched that, and I was very entertained. Cutie Cinderella did a great job. Things like just having players on the cast more. You know, seeing speak a uh, uh, interview uh, blabber and seeing Bwipo interview fudge and all these other things this is the most invested into the LCS I've ever felt and I don't have a insight into how much Jackie played a role but I can just say as a fan that this is the most invested into just random players across the entire LCS uh, that I've ever felt and I'm a C9 fan, so I've always felt invested in C9 players, but I now care about other players just by watching LCS content. When and did you when did you start watching LCS Double G? So I started watching in 2015 summer the Gauntlet run to Worlds with uh, High uh, in Jungle made me a big fan of C9, and so. I could have a bit of COVID brain, and COVID might have just derailed a lot of the LCS content, but I feel like this split, last split was a good start, but this split especially really put the players first, and I think that it's the right move going forward. So uh, I, I think well, there's a couple separate conversations here that are somewhat linked, right? One, I think that the LCS broadcast has been phenomenal this split. They've definitely had some missteps, but I think overall it's been really good. The hype video that they played, was it Saturday or Sunday, Mark, where they like did the Sunday. interspersing of all the stuff? Was it Sunday? Sunday. Um, that felt... Oh, like the best moments thing? Yeah. That felt so cool. Like it, it really... I, I think that Jackie and I want to give credit to other people too, right? Like Justin, the creative director, and Emin, and, and all of these people, maybe Mark somewhere in there, uh, all these people who tried really hard to, to change the nature of what the LCS broadcast felt like. And you saw that from 
the very, very beginning of the split where they had a very fun hype video with Fudge and Blabber and the elevator with the crab or situation and uh, all the all the players. And it was way different than like all these players are running and they're crossing their arms or whatever. It's like the LCS is going to be fun. And well, I think throughout I the split, wanna, they did a good job of that. I also want to say the Dash video, his return video where you just had uh, LCS player cameos across the entire video. That was also a real highlight, and that was a real joy. I just want to call. I will, just... that, I will say for that video, I sat there for three and a half hours to be there in, the, in there for two seconds. Okay, so I, I'm not sure uh, if I liked it so much, but you know what? It's I will, okay. I'll say this, Fudge. That is like traditional show business. Is like three hour call time usually before shoot. Could get through makeup, wardrobe, have you sit around. Do six takes of your shot, even though you know you feel like you're doing nothing different every single time. The few times I've been on set for like real things, it is. But I would say that that's maybe not the best use of a pro player's time before they go to play. Nah, I'm, I have nothing against. I was just making a joke, but I, I'm, but yeah. I'm happy that they that they invited me to content. Generally, I like doing content as long as it's not on my off day, and it wasn't on my off day. So, good job. Regardless, I uh, I think that it. It, the, the broadcast has been has been really good. I, it is hard this split to gauge how much of that has been Jackie because I know she kind of stepped away for health reasons and then she did come back uh, a couple weeks into the split, which was really good. Um, but and I'm and I'm very happy that she's taking time to focus on her own health stuff. She's in all my interactions with her. She's just been a really wonderful person. Um, and so I think he, here's my my concern is. Uh, I don't want the commissioner role to become like the next defense against the dark arts thing where you just have a different person constantly in that role. I, th I think it is really rough that there's not been a, like you, cause the, my concern is you have another commissioner come in and they're like, okay, well I have my vision and like, this is how we do it. And then what you really want is somebody that can like continue the through line of what this league and product needs to be. Um, so I I don't know. I think it's just for me, I, I'm happy for Jackie personally. I am I'm just it's so rough. The broadcast and the LCS as a whole needs a strong, constant hand that will carry it through the next two to three years. So I don't view this news as like a good situation i guess is the best way that i would put it um, mr beast please be the strong hand i, I need don't you, think man. mr beast is going to become the next commissioner of the lcs <laughs> fudge <laughs> bad, bad. uh yeah bring so him, bring him you know what that's a great idea. maybe you should be commissioner fudge you have great ideas i like yes. that one no i don't have good ideas uh i do want to say because i've seen some people ask about it in chat so i have a scheduled interview with Mr. John Jonathan Needham for next week. So for those that were wondering about that that interview and when I'm doing the follow-up and all that stuff, it'll be next week. I'm not entirely sure how much of it will be on LCS versus broader esports stuff. I do want to talk about the LCS stuff, but there's also like a lot going on in esports if you haven't been paying attention. So there's going to be a lot to talk about, but uh, there is going to be some stuff coming up soon around that. Um, I think... If I could chime in on what your viewers want as primarily LCS fans, I think they'll be most interested in primarily LCS. If, if one of these conversa conversations has to get shortchanged, I think uh, most of your viewers... Yeah, you and I should go for a walk. Uh, this week. I think we should go for a walk too. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, wh what else? Uh, I guess Mark or, or Fudge, I kind of stole the, the microphone there, but do you guys have any thoughts on Jackie's departure? I... No... I don't really talk to her too much. I think she, whenever I was at an event, she would always make sure to come up to me and ask me like any for any feedback, anything that she that I liked that I didn't like. So I think that's already a good job for for her to just be willing to do that individually, like personally. Um, I don't really know anything behind the scenes about like what she's doing, so uh, I can't really speak on that. But I also like the the calling guy said. I really liked. The like players being on broadcast and casting, I really like that. I loved, I loved all like the, I like catching up with Doublelift a lot. I like the random content pieces. I thought the hype videos were really nice. 
Um, I actually really, really like the opening ceremony as well. Um, that was that was really, really good. Uh, so I, I do think that the content this split has been the best, obvious out of any split probably that I've been in, uh, personally, since like 2021 spring. So I think it's done a really good job there. Uh, I think I just need to start streaming to revive this dead region. But yeah, moving on. That's what it is. Okay, great. You always talk about Wait. this and then you never do it. So stream, stream okay, to revive I the dead region. Manager, I sent a message to my manager one hour ago. No, what? No, two hours ago. Saying, can you set up my stream? I want to stream tomorrow. There you go. Well, wow. must be nice. Oh, is it streaming to save the region or build your safety net for when it collapses, or both? Why not both, man? Why not both? All right. Uh, I, I'm I'm sad that she's gone. I talked a lot with Jackie. Um, probably more than previous upper management people. Like I, I usually tend to be pretty focused on trying to make the LCS product as good as it can be. But I think talking with her and stuff really opened my eyes to like the broader ecosystem and like things that I always had opinions on. Like obviously all the casters get together in like their little rooms and like share their thoughts. But like it was the first time I ever tried really passing communication up a lot more. And uh, yeah, I felt like we had a good report. So it sucks to see her go. So I, I do really want to just mention that she did a much better Okay, I shouldn't say better. I don't want to compare. I think one area she excelled in that in the in in compare that's comparison. She just did a much better job of talking to everybody than past But you people. just said much better again. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I don't care. I gave, up. I gave up. I gave up. I gave up. I just said it. I just said it. Previous leadership did not do a good job of talking to everybody and getting all their feedback and everything. I think she, what like maybe her the best thing she did was go to the community, ask what was up, go to the casters ask what was up. Go to media. Go to uh, players. Go to everybody. Um, I think she did a really, really great job with that stuff. And so I think people felt heard in perhaps a way that they had not in a very long time. So, uh, yeah. Well, again, hope, hopefully the, the best is yet to come for her. I, I wish her all the best, and hopefully she gets into a healthier spot. Uh, Double G, anything you want to shout out before we go to our next caller? Yeah, uh, shout out Alienware and shout out Cloud9 and honestly the entire LCS broadcast. They were smurfing it this year or this split, and uh, I really hope whoever the next LCS commissioner is puts the same focus on the players because it's been a great split to watch, and I hope the viewership increases because the quality has skyrocketed this split. Yeah, I agree. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. The only thing I didn't really like the split was catching up with Double Lift and then the hosting for that. Are you smarter than an LCS analyst? Yeah, uh, yeah that's understandable. Yeah. Did Did you actually like it, Fudge? You said you liked it, but did you actually like it? Because I feel like the catching it was, up with uh, Double Lift thing. Yeah. Well, I actually was introduced by Max Walter to the Eric Andre show like a month before you guys started <laughs> doing that segment, and I really liked it. So then when I saw it, I was like. Oh, I know what this is, and then I thought it was pretty funny. You know. Well, I don't know why you and Max Waldo are watching that because it's for forty-year-olds, according to Double Lift. What? That's Did bad. you not see that clip? I didn't see the, the clip. I saw you comment on it about about like, oh, we're getting him for the show because because he said this. I saw he said this, so we're getting him for the show. And I watched the catching up with Double Lift with Double Lift. Um, the thing, the thing like is, Peter really doesn't watch be, any. <laughs> Peter only watches anime. So, like, if you are, if there's something that you are referencing that is not anime, he's gonna be like, "Oh, this is for boomers." That's like his whole thing. <laughs> that was so. a good voice. That was a good double his voice. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. A, they were fun to do. Hopefully, we'll see if we do more next split. You want to go? Yeah, you want to go grab the next caller. All right. Uh, thank you to. So many things, the bald goose and I Ithic gifting five subs. Thank you, Ithic. That was very generous of you. Really appreciate it. Uh, all right. Mark is coming back with our next caller any moment. Here he is with Rishith. Rishith, where are you calling from? I am calling from College Station, Texas. College Station, Texas. What do you want to talk about on the show? My take is that 100 Thieves should go get Diplex to replace Bjergsen in the mid lane, especially in light of Jack's comment that he would let anybody from the academy team move up to an LCS spot. 
Um, okay, well, I I think there's like two separate issues on whether or not they like if he's there and then also Jack's thing. But go ahead and, and elaborate. So I think that at least from what I saw in the games and some limited time that I spent watching Academy, I think that Diplex brings a similar kind of floor to what Bjergsen or even Jensen might, where you can kind of get through the lane phase with a variety of different like control mage-esque champs, but even in his time in LCS, Diplex seemed like he really understood how to, how to team fight, and he could always play the melee champs like Silas or Akali, and then in um, in Academy, he was also playing some like kind of like you could say off meta picks like Swain and Kled. So I think he also brings like a different kind of champ pool than someone like Bjergsen or Jensen. So I think that his ceiling could be higher if Hundred Thieves pick him up instead of Jensen, as you guys were previously talking about. I I think that you don't want another rookie or young player on that team. Why is that? Because I think they already have several, and I think that Peter's brain and uh, emotional situation can only handle so many, and uh, you need to buddy him up with another person who can help keep so everything. Double, so you're saying doublets can't play with players that aren't uh, veterans? I, I know he's definitely playing with players that aren't veterans. I'm saying that you probably want to limit how many he's playing with. Okay. I mean, even so, uh, I'm somewhat memeing about the double stuff, but even then, like, I don't think you want to be sitting there trying to teach three of the five players how to level up as players um, from you know rookies or or newer players. I think you want that roster to be three veterans and two rookies, which was what the premise was of it. So, I I don't I don't think Dipix I... is the solution. I think that if I'm 100 Thieves, I'd rather get Diplex over Jensen because he's cheaper. And I think Diplex will be better than Jensen by next year. And in, for the long-term decision, not just the summer split, I'd rather have Diplex. Obviously, maybe some of the players on that team wouldn't want Diplex because they want to win summer and go to Worlds, blah, 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 blah. If I was 100 Thieves, I'd want Diplex over Jensen. Can I chime back in real quick? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I think that... If Diplex joined 100 Thieves, it could be a lot like what EG did last year with Inspired and JoJo, where JoJo's kind of like molded in Inspired's vision of how to play jungle. And Inspired is obviously like very, very farm heavy. He likes to invade. He likes to fight. And I think Closer could do the same thing with Diplex, whereas he might not... Somebody like Jensen, who's more experienced or more set in his ways, might not be as malleable to what the team wants to do so i think maybe for 100 thieves future if they want if if they think closer is like their franchise player it might be better to have diplex as his running mate um uh, in okay go ahead Mark. no no no, no you go my mine's a uh, gonna... in, in response to the idea of like the like the analogy of like jojo inspired i think that jojo as a player is a very different player from diplex i think diplex is the same style of mid lane as Jensen and Bjergsen, and I understand that he can play like a Kali Silas and that sort of thing, but I do think just the way he plays and the way he, I've talked to him about the game, I think he's definitely more of a uh, less risk type of player, let's say, um, whereas like JoJo is very different, and I think that's why I agree that like I think Closer as a player is probably going to play better with a mid laner that's way more aggressive, and like the argument is like, oh, Jensen isn't as aggressive, blah, 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 blah like Bjergsen. Um, I don't really feel like Diplex, Jensen, or Bjergsen are very different in play style. My question is, can Double if like Travis was saying, really survive another rookie? I feel like Tenacity has already done so much mental damage to uh, Double Lift. I don't know if he can handle another one. This is this is uh, Mark baiting Fudge. Yeah, he, he I, know, I know, I know. As, 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 to... as, as soon as I heard Tenacity, I already knew he was going to try to bait me. <laughs> I'm trying to see if he'll defend his boyfriend. Uh, first of all, not my boyfriend. He's already taken. Second of all, um, Tenacity, I think the problem with Tenacity was he didn't understand how to play macro at the early parts of the split. Like, he didn't understand how to play the game of role. He could only really play his lane. So what happened was they would play for top lane and he wouldn't carry the game. 
and then they go later into the split. They started losing in the middle of the split, and then they were just like, "All right, we can only really win if Doublelift's like playing team fights on hyper carries and carrying the game because Bjorkson is not very aggressive in lane. Tenacity doesn't seem to be able to carry the game when we get him ahead, and let's just play for Doublelift, guys." And then they decided to make a circle of champions, I believe is what it was called, uh, where he could basically only play tanks, and. I think it was, he was put in a pretty hard position where I feel like the way they play the game and what champions he's being put on in like pretty bad matchups for the most part, I would say, makes it pretty hard for him as a player to look like he's not a liability if they lose. Like, if your team's losing as a four-man and you're playing tank versus tank or tank versus carry, the game is unplayable for you. That's all I have to say. I will, I, will that, also, I will also say, though, I don't think he played exceptionally well uh, following up with that though if they get a jensen or a diplex and they are this more like you said less risk they're more risk averse uh, of a player does that mean it's better or worse for, for tenacity because on the one hand you could say it's better because they'll need him to c carry and maybe they'll allow him to play aggressive again or maybe they just double down on the double lift carry us uh completely I, I, strategy. I think i think that tenacity can improve throughout summer split and i think he already has improved a lot uh in terms of his like ideas of how to win the game and like concepts and ideas around macro and just the game in general uh that he can play carries and be useful in the game without throwing it away let's say because I, I also I felt like whenever i laned against him he was definitely one of the harder top laners to lane against fudge what is the more more certain path to worlds this year diplex or Jensen. Well, it's this year, if you don't take into account money or the year after, it's Jensen. Yeah. I think. All right. Rishith, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Uh, shout out Cloud9. I've been a longtime fan for many years, so it was really nice to come on and talk to Fudge. And shout out you and Mark, as always. I'm also a very longtime Hotline League listener, so thanks nice. for everything. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. All right, Mark is off to grab our next caller, and off he goes. Thank you to Warzy for the prime sub. Uh, when do you guys know when you're going to Europe yet, Fudge? I asked uh, Ben, and he said he wasn't sure. So I don't know if it's been finalized. I believe, yet. I believe it's around two weeks from now. Oh damn! That's okay. We fly. Nights so is I here. So I have like a week off. That's why I'm going to stream. Nice. Nights is here. Nights, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Iowa. Iowa. What do you want to talk about on the show? I'm here to talk about uh, Fudge, how he should have got the MVP based off his top gap and the voice comms for the C9 matches. I think he <laughs> actually spent a lot of time directing some of the 50-50 players on his team to 50-50 in the right direction. I agree with you, actually. <laughs> I think that, uh, well, actually, I think during the regular season, my comms were not as good as the playoffs. But I think during playoffs, I started focusing a lot more on trying to direct my teammates and be more vocal. And I got a lot of comments from a lot of different people like in the team and out of the team about how they watched the comms videos and were like, wow, you're doing really good in terms of communicating with the team. And then I was happy about that because I do feel like I improved that a lot. But I don't think that that's very easy for people to see. So I can understand why I did not get MVP. Well, also MVP is voted for during the regular season. Yes, also not playoffs. So right. you don't actually agree with the caller. You're just happy about the comm stuff. I'm happy about the comm stuff, yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. I was going to chime in and say I put him on my ballot over Blabber. Uh, the, the top three vote getters were Berserker, Prince, and then Blabber. So uh, that's that was for my my earlier comment about the the Bjergsen category. Yeah, you're uh, you're a Blabber hater. From. I'm not a Blabber hater. One of my favorite players. I just as I as an aside, it Mark, right, it was it was, a, it was a, you know what it was too. The mechanical bull, man. Like I'm so sorry. Moving on. Yeah. If, if he went on the mechanical bull, I would have retroactively changed time to put him number one on my, my thing. Sven, Sven, I think, said something that really helped me, like, not be scared to vote in certain ways when he said that, like, I was like, yeah, don't you feel like the MVP is, like, heavily influenced by meta, you know, or, like, uh, there's just metas that are better for some, you know, roles. And, like, they're clearly the most important because the game has made them important. And, like, their splits where jungle is really important and Blabber just shits on people. And it's like, clearly he's the MVP. 
And like, while he had a good split, like jungle wasn't super impactful. Like everyone was kind of talking about that. Um, and everyone knew AD carry was the most impactful. And so like, it made it easy for me to be like, yeah, I'm just going to put an AD carry. Cause it was the best AD carry in an AD carry meta, you know, like, um, unfortunately for top laners, it's never the top lane meta. <laughs> I disagree, Which makes it really take, hard. I disagree with the take about the bot lane meta thing. I, I you didn't think it was it. a bot lane meta? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that ADC was necessarily more impactful in the game's like victory than any other role. I think that a lot was of... Was there like, a world where all you guys were playing tanks at one point in time during the split? That was whenever ADC was popping off too. Yeah, but the the reality is, is like a lot of the time, it's just the better tank players that win the game because you're just so much better than the enemy tank players at team fighting, and then the ADC gets his free hit and then win the game. It's not like an AD carry can play if he doesn't get space to shoot people. Right. So I also think that's why Berserker looks so good all the time, and every team fight is so consistent. Oh, 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 I, 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 I see what this is. No, no, no. AD, AD carry is not broken, guys. I me make him Blabba, look good. Me and Blabba. Uh, by far the best at team fighting in the league. It's not close. I think that's the reason. I see that's what this big is. Reason why Those looks massive so good buffs fighting. to AD carry itemization, where it's now a forty percent break point. These like bloodthirsts are getting made two hundred gold cheaper. You're delicious. Uh, You're delicious. Yeah, man. Is AD, not, carry AD, is so, AD carry being so broken is being played in both AD carry and support. You know? Oh, you're right. You're right. It's. So you're saying the crit you itemization is the reason why ADC is broken? Is that what you just said? I said there's a lot of reasons, but that's okay, one the of them. Was that they got a let's massive debate this. Let's debate they, this. Wait, wait. Okay, so in terms of the champions that were actually good this split, it was not some utility bullshit, like terrible AD carry meta. So you're not on Jin, Varus, Ash. You can actually win Varys early games. Was, and Varus win was heavily win. meta in, in, in this split. He was played a lot in support too, but yeah, sure. he was he was high prio. Ash, Ash was also the, actually the, the highest prio champion yes. in, in the meta, but it was support, because of yes. the flexibility, yeah, support. So like... Uh, what people were actually playing, like slamming Lucian, Zeri, uh, like those sorts of champions. Uh, like Lucian is basically good the entire game. It has high high agency. So I think there was a bot lane meta. I think top lane was very impactful actually early on in the split when there was like a lot of carries. Yeah. Um, but then that that died off. And so like over the course of the whole split, it felt like 80 carries were the most important. Mid lane, mid lane had some moments, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. I think that because what, what's your point? I think that because tanks were so heavily meta in top and jungle with Sejuani, Maokai, and then like Sion coming in, Cassante, all these champions, it's naturally going to make ADC look like the most impactful just because everyone's playing tanks. So like the ADC is going to look like, oh, it's killing everyone because there's tanks and then the ADC and this is going to be the highlight champions. I think that in other regions, you look at other regions, you look at LPL, they're playing Kennen and they're playing Fiora and they're playing Gwen and they're playing all these champions and top lane looks fucking broken all of a sudden. And, it, and then the ADCs are just getting one shot by the enemy Kennen. I think it's just because we're in NA that all the NA top laners suck and don't pick these champions. They don't pick the Jaces. We're the only team in NA that actually plays Jace well. And then... In both lanes, yeah. In both lanes, in both lanes. And then... It, it just looks like yo, the, the shitty-ass top laners, because NA top laners just suck, just can't play carries, so then all of a sudden, ball lane is the most broken role in the game. That's my take. So just to circle back on mine real fast, uh, I just want to point out, then, if, top, if he's the best top laner in the league, wouldn't he be the most valuable? Considering you could interchange Berserker with Prince. I know that maybe he doesn't want to say that, but you could make it C9 Prince. You would probably have the exact same result. F Fudge, I, I Fudge said, said that, that, that exactly on the broadcast. I said, I said, I said <laughs> yeah. That specifically. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, there's no difference in the AD carries. It, so, that is he really the most valuable if you could change him out with another person in the league? And then, furthermore, your top lane will lose if you have any other NA top laner to Fudge. Did anyone actually beat Fudge in the top lane ever? Did he ever get top gapped? Or did he just he beat everyone? A couple times, I think. When like some random games, killed? yeah. When did I get solo killed? I got solo killed the split. Yeah. I swear to God, you got solo killed versus Impact. Didn't, didn't that happen oh, in that really troll game? Queued into the tower. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, yeah, forty yeah. CS and had uh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You were you were, win you were winning the lane until you weren't winning the lane. Oh, yeah, yeah. I decided to queue and not realize <laughs> the Fiora queue targets champions when I play hundreds of thousands of games of Fiora. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then further. Um, it's considered the weakest role, and he's still in the conversation for MVP. So I'm just saying, like, if he, if bot laners are what's in, and you're still talking about Fudge, doesn't that make him even more important? 
I think mostly we were talking about ADCs the split, to be yeah. fair. Like, especially yeah. before playoffs, it was like Prince, Berserker, Prince, Berserker, Prince, yeah. Berserker, Stixay, Stixay, Stixay. Wow, Double Lift well, had a great final weekend. You know, yeah. it was. We, we, I, I don't think that we were talking about Fudge that much until play, I don't, quite frankly, until voting came around. And then everybody's like, oh, who are the best top lane? Oh, wow, Fudge. Yeah, you can't, you, it's just like so obvious. Um, so. I, I think I, I think I, that kind of undermines your point, Knights. So um, I, I know we talked about you can swap Berserker out. I feel like no offense to any of the C nine guys because they're they're such a well balanced team um, and they are all actually really good and top top and top of the roles basically. You, you can kind of make that case with like a lot of them. I agree. Uh, I think Blabber is probably the least interchangeable. Um, I agree with that as well. So like you know, I, no offense to Fudge, but like if they had impact on this team. They might still win the t- title. Yeah, I, you know, think they I, would. I, I think that Sienna yeah. would still win if that impact too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, hey, nice. But I will say. You, oh, go ahead. Uh, the, the one final thing I was going to throw is, is Fudge's shot calling is huge uh, when you listen to those comms. We were doing, I forget why, but I, I was listening. We were, we were trying to find like plays for like some pros recently to, to highlight. So we, sh- we showed like who he clips. And then it was just like every time there was a, a macro setup, I was, I was surprised at how vocal Fudge was compared to like. I don't know, a lot of top laners. Did you, did you watch the EG voice comms? Did you watch Someday's voice comms in the latest EG voice comms video? No, I didn't. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if he said a single word the entire game. <laughs> the, all three of their games. I'm not sure there was a single word spoken. To be fair, he was sick. To be fair. But, you know, that's all I have to say. But, I mean, I think I think everyone knows that he's, he's a quieter person compared to you and Impact, who are both very vocal. That's, right. that's fair, yeah. Knights, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our last call of the night? Uh, shout out to you guys for doing Hotline League and for convincing me to re- read the last four or the last yeah last four books of the Mistborn series because I was just gonna completely ignore the like next segment and then I read them and it was completely worth my time. So nice, thanks for that. yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> I thought they're pretty fun. It's it's a diff- very different vibe than the first Mistborn. So yeah, well I liked some of the stuff that happened in the fourth one too, but we won't yeah, get yeah, into yeah. that. No so. spoilers. Anyway, okay. uh, catch you later. Thanks for calling in. Yep, thanks. All right. Mark, I know we had something in the waiting room. I think they moved to the sub topics chat. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get him back and test okay. again. Cool. Um, all right. We've got Badger Yar. Thank you for the six, or sorry, for the 22 months. Uh, just so everybody knows, I will be streaming after the show for a while. And I have an, an eight minute long bounty. And if you stick around, it's actually very, very helpful for me. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. All right. Uh, is it Euro or, G- or Gyro? It is Euro, but um, I think mean, a lot of people say Gyro, so it, either one is fine. No one, no one knows how to pronounce that food. It's, well, it's, it's really I didn't sad. know if so it, was, called it, it was based off of the food or if it was. No, I'm, I'm with you, though, Travis, because people will call it a hero sometimes, too. The, All right. The worst is Gyro, to be honest. That's Gy- Gyro is the worst. Euro, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. What do you want to talk about on the show? So my take is that even though everyone thinks GG overperformed, I think that there's still a better representative for MSI than FlyQuest because their mid-jungle was way better. And I think mid-jungle translates better internationally compared to having like an outstanding like bottom lane in Prince or something like that. Because, I mean, Berserker was there in Worlds last year and uh, he didn't really translate much into international success, unfortunately. And this is us. I'm a C9 fan, so... I so would, you're saying that mid-jungle is more important than bottom lane? I think mid jungle is, yeah, more important, especially in the early game. I think the early games are better. I think they're, you'll translate into more map control earlier, and then you'll have uh, objectives, um, like you'll have a better objective setup and stuff like that. So I think just Gory and, and River will set up way better than uh, Spica and uh, Fickle would have. Um, my opinion is that GGS are winning most of their games off of early game in the LCS and they will lose early game very hard against international teams and I think that's just mainly because uh, if I'm being completely honest I think Licorice will just get stomped by almost every top laner from a major region Um, and I don't think that Gory is actually that good at lane I think that they do find very good gank setups and I do think River is really good but I doubt that they will beat I doubt that they're actually going to like win games through early game, just because I don't think any NA team really ever does that. Um, 
And I would rather have someone like FlyQuest who actually has pretty good team fighting uh, in later stages of the game. And I don't think of that much worse in early game. Like I, I actually don't think Speak and, and, and Vikla in terms of early game are like much worse than Gori Rubo. But Mark, isn't the whole Rubo. thing that we've always sent teams that were not good at early game and you just sort of that's part of the reason why it's like miserable to watch NA because they just get they they lose early game. Right. And the they idea just... is, okay, okay, yes. You could also go for the the idea of like okay, Gory River, like early game aggressive players, so they can coin flip the game early game and maybe win off getting a lead. You can make that argument. I mean, I mean, it's just yeah. because the the alternative is if we sent it not the only alternative, but I think many times it has sucked for NA fans because we send teams that are weaker early game, and so then they just get demolished early game, and then late game is just non-existent because there's a 10k gold lead. At the time you get there, and it's just over. Yeah, I'm just not sure if I would agree that like FlyQuest and GG are that much different in early game. But... All right, that's fair. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I get where a lot of fans probably come from. Where like FlyQuest might look like the kind of pro typical NA team um, outside maybe Vikla, but it's like you know a lot of tanks top, hyperscaling yeah. bot lane. You try and control the early game and, and get to late game to team fight. So like I, I can see why fans don't like that, but I will also say that usually gets us through play-ins. NA has never dropped out of play-ins, you know. So uh, this is riskier to, to fudge his point a little bit about like you know they're gonna run a bunch of great early games. Um, then uh, so this is I guess where the play-in format matters for fudge a little bit, but it's like kind of a double Elim tournament um, and. There's like a last chance qualifier match. And in theory, they'll be playing a bunch of teams. I don't know if that graphic makes it readable to you, but basically it's double Elim with um, Brazil, LATAM, Japan, Vietnam, PCS, NA, EU, and China in there. Um, and so, like, even if they lose to a major region, the only team that they have to beat that most people would say is in the major region category is, is PCS, maybe Vietnam. I don't know. But, um, do you think that they would? I know you said the the major regions that they'll struggle against and stuff like that. But like, do you think are you are you concerned about their level completely, or is it just against the major regions? I don't know. I, I just feel like when I watch the games, I'm just a Golden Guardians hater, man. Move on. You, See, you guys, in the press conference, I said that you, and you're like, no, I don't think I've ever said that. I don't think I can, like, vocalize, I don't think I can actually, like, talk, like, give a good reason, you know? It's just a feeling I have that, like, the early games, they, I feel bad saying that they got lucky in the early games, but. Uh, Dude, I thought we'll they, on. like, okay, we'll you are on. the pro player, so help me understand, because I okay, felt. I think in game one. With, okay, I, I don't think they got lucky. Now that, that's because they were making so say, many cool aggressive plays, right? Yes, like they're yes, tower they're diving and not playing. Yes. That doesn't feel like luck, right? Yes, it, it didn't feel like luck. Yes, uh, the only thing I could think about that's luck is like the game two, like team fight against us at like four v four, and then they, they could have just got quadra killed if we played like slightly better mechanically. And any, but then you get four for us, and then we go, <laughs> and, then, and then we just got fucked and lost the game. So it's just like that's the only thing I remember about saying being lucky. I, I think I'm just a Golden Guardians hater. You're right, Travis. Like. I think that maybe I'm just delusional and maybe GGS is actually... Just I'm not saying fun. you're delusional. It's more just like... I think I'm going to be delusional. It I'm is funny. I'm delusional. Yeah, I, I just think it's... it's For me, as a, a casual, it was... They, are, they were very fun to watch in a way I yeah. did not expect this weekend because you saw them playing so aggressive early and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is yeah. Golden Guardians. Like, you just don't expect that from one of these teams that people have considered lower. And oftentimes, you don't even expect it from the top teams, right? Like, you end up in so many situations where there's, like, one or two kills by 15 minutes. And then, like, everything comes down to dragon fights and baron fights at the end. And I felt like it was very entertaining to watch them. And that's one of the reasons why, like, win or lose, I'm excited that they are our second team because I do think that if they can at least play as aggressive as they did in playoffs, at least it won't feel like they're losing because they're just sitting around doing nothing and losing, which is what so much of international events have felt like as an NA fan for years, you know? So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I've, I've been convinced that GGS is the best second team uh, to 
come with any. I mean, for any. To come I mean, I'm not saying they're going to do good. I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm just saying. My opinion is now that GGS is the best team. Uh, and they're GG, by the way. You keep calling them GGS. They dropped the S years ago. <laughs> oh, my bad. GG. GG. I'm glad to have you guys as the, the MSI second seed. Uh, you guys are for sure going to do great. Uh, all right, Mark. I don't know if you have any, any final thoughts on this. No, no. I think I think we've jumped the shark on this, on this topic. I, I feel like I don't mind when pro players just have an intuition. They play it. It's like... It's no, no, no. I think experts. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I just mean like when sometimes a pro player can't vocalize something, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Like I've been a lot of times in conversations like with junglers, like why'd you do that play? And it's like felt right, man. And like people, like experts in a lot of things say that chess players, whatever, like, you know, yeah. It's felt like the right play or whatever. So you know what? If you feel like Golden Guardian sucks, maybe nah, they do. Nah, I thought about it more and I think I'm just delusional. I think Golden Guardians are good. I, I don't think they're good or bad. I'm just saying they're fun. I'm excited to watch them play. What does good, good or bad even mean? Okay, let's talk about this. Yeah, we're LCS team. We're LCS <laughs> teams, okay? Move on, move on. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Euro, for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, yeah, just uh, shout out you guys. Um, I started watching last year, right before Worlds, and uh, I attended your live Worlds thing, so that was pretty cool um at, in san francisco and then uh just shout out my wife and then shout out my friends back in uh, new york nice and, uh, thanks for making it on the show uh we'll catch you next time thank you have a good night good night Mark. all right that is the show no one leave but other other than mark and fudge in a second mark what do you want to shout out what do you want to plug uh i don't know uh i don't know what's going on is there anything going on? Are I you doing a blame game this week? You need to do a blame game this week. Twitter.com slash fudge cakey, Instagram.com slash c9fudge, and shout out to the cord. Well, you... uh, fudge, I'm going to get the you cord. your shout outs in a second. You did not need to slam through those. No, it's just because he, he had the time to think. You, it's because yeah. you're, you're losing viewers by the second. He needs to get it in front of as many eyeballs as possible. I respect the hustle. I didn't actually think about that, but that's genius. That's okay. Retention, right retention that's, rates. That's yeah. intuition right there. You know, that intuition, the chess play intuition. <laughs> Here, here it is. Content creation is just thinking about retention rates. Everything is retention. Mark, are you doing what? a blame game this week? I don't think so. Oh, come on. I need you to do one. Do one about what, this what past if I weekend. Gave you some, what if I did something fun? Like what? what is if blame I, game what not if fun? I, I think you, blame game is fun. No, blame games can be fun. But I mean, like, what if I gave you um, all the outtakes of things that I wasn't allowed to put in catching up with double lift? Well, I can't sponsor stuff on that so are you sure you can't i'm pretty sure based off of some of the things you've told me okay well then i don't have the bandwidth to do both so i guess i'm doing fudge have you heard of a belvussy before (laughs) this is a a word that mark apparently uttered oh oh, i i i know about that yeah (laughs) yeah We've been uh, in and out of those uh, conversations, <laughs> conversations, conversations. Uh, There's yeah. apparently a yeah, lot of things on the, on the cutting, cutting floor that I don't even know if they'll make it in. Mark, I'd like some content well, if, I can if, monetize. If, if if you are not going to, you asked me for it, so I'll yeah, yeah, I will. Otherwise. I mean, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying I also need something that like fulfills a contractual obligation that I have to a major company. And you don't think Belvussy does? No, I don't think so it does. Can you can you give me the definition to Belvussy? Belvussy. Um, there's a champion called Belveth. Okay, all right, all right, and... all right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's uh, fudge. Anything else you want to shout out? Uh, I'm streaming tomorrow. Check it out. All I don't right. know what time. Uh, for me, it's gonna be a great week. We're gonna do some cool stuff. Uh. Stick around and shout out to everybody that I saw this weekend. It was really fun seeing a bunch of people in person, and uh, it's always really nice meeting folks. So thanks, everyone. We'll catch you next week for another episode of Hotline League.